In everyday life, we see some objects behave like waves, like water waves in the sea, and other objects behave like particles, like billiard balls on a pool table. But when we use quantum mechanics to describe matter, something very different happens. Single particles can behave like waves, unless we observe them, and then they behave like particles again. Let's resolve the paradox of wave-particle duality. Welcome back to the Quantum Paradoxes series, where I explain how to recreate counterintuitive quantum thought experiments on a quantum computer using Qiskit. The famous quantum version of the double slit experiment demonstrates the surprising quantum phenomenon of single particle interference. In this video, I'm going to explain how to test the ideas of the double slit experiment using a simple quantum circuit. At the end, I'll show you how to modify our quantum circuit to understand the real reason that observing the particles stops their wave-like behavior. So let's demonstrate the double slit experiment. In the double slit thought experiment, we have a source of single particles, which could be any particle like an electron, but in this case, I'll talk about photons for the rest of the explanation. Then we have a barrier with two gaps in it, which is a double slit. And finally, we have a screen which detects the intensity of the particles that are reaching it. So let's see what would happen if our source was of classical particles. Then each particle would either go through the top slit or the bottom slit. So then when we measure the intensity on the screen, we would see two bright regions with high intensity, one for each gap in the double slit. But if instead our source was of classical waves, then we would see something else. When we send a classical wave through the double slits, then it will have a part going through each slit and these two parts of the wave interfere. And so this will lead to constructive and destructive interference, leading to an intensity pattern with lots of bright and dark regions on the screen, showing that this interference between the two parts of the wave happened. Now, what actually happens when we do this with single photons? What we find when we use single photons is that we still see this interference pattern like we'd see with a classical wave. So this suggests that even just sending a single photon through the double slit, somehow it manages to interfere with itself. Now the physical wave interfering here is not like classical waves, in this case, it's the quantum wave function of the photon. Now, something strange happens if we add a detector and we try and observe which slit the photon goes through. In that case, there are two separate parts where the photon either goes through one slit or it goes through the other slit. And then we no longer see this interference pattern. Instead, we just see two bright regions like where the photon was behaving as a particle. This fact that photons can behave either as particles or as waves, depending on whether we detect them or not, is known as wave-particle duality. Now, I think a simpler way of seeing the key ideas of this thought experiment is to translate it to something called an interferometer, which has a simple representation in terms of quantum circuits. The process here is very similar to turning the quantum bomb tester thought experiment into a quantum circuit, which I explained in the first video of the Quantum Paradox series. In our Max Zander interferometer, we have a source of single photons, and then when these reach the beam splitter, they're split into a superposition of being reflected and being transmitted. This is analogous to the photons in the double slit experiment, 
being in a superposition of going through both of the slits. Then the mirrors reflect the photon beams to meet again at the second beam splitter. Now here they constructively interfere so that they merge back into one beam and so any photons that are detected after the second beam splitter will have been transmitted. This is our evidence of single photon interference which is analogous to seeing the pattern of bright and dark interference fringes in the double slit experiment. If you're not familiar with quantum gates like Hadamard and CNOT, then I recommend taking a look at the Basics of Quantum Information course on the IBM Quantum Learning Platform, linked in the description below, before continuing with this video. So to turn our interferometer into a quantum circuit, we can represent the beam splitters as Hadamard gates and represent the photon as a qubit, where the zero state represents the photon in the bottom path and the one state represents the photon in the top path through the interferometer. Now the first beam splitter sends the photon traveling in the bottom path into a superposition of the top and bottom. So our qubit needs to end up in the plus state an equal superposition of zero and one, which we do by applying a first Hadamard gate. Then if we have no detectors involved, then the second beam splitter has a superposition of states as input, which then constructively interfere to merge into one state again, always hitting the detector on the right. We represent this by applying another Hadamard gate to our qubit in the plus state, which should output a qubit to be in the zero state. We then detect this final state on our screen by applying a final measurement at the end. So let's simulate this to see what the outcome is. And we can see that the outcome is always zero as expected for successful interference. To see what happens if we measure which path the photon took, let's go back to the light board. If we add a detector to check which path the photon went through, then the photon will be projected into either the top path or the bottom path. So if it gets projected into either of the paths, then when it reaches the second beam splitter, it will now split into an equal superposition of being reflected and transmitted. So now it can be detected at both detectors each half the time. This is analogous to detecting which slit a photon went through in the double slit experiment, which destroys the photon's interference with itself and makes it seem like the photon came from just one slit. In our quantum circuit, adding the detector to get information about which path the photon took is equivalent to adding a measurement after the first Hadamard gate. When we do this, we'll see that instead of the outcomes of the final measurement being zero every time, they should have an equal chance of being zero and one. So let's simulate this circuit to see, and you can see that half the time we get zero and half the time we get one. Now, the fact that a photon's behavior changes when we add a detector seems quite mysterious. How could just retrieving some information about the photon lead to a physical change in its behavior? One way to understand the mechanism by which this happens better is to model the detector as a physical quantum system. So in our quantum circuit, we can model the detector as another qubit. Then instead of directly adding a measurement between the Hadamard gates, we model the detection by adding a control knot gate between the photon qubit and the detector qubit. Then if the photon is in the state zero, the detector will stay as zero. And if the photon is in the state one, then the detector will switch to the state one. The states of the detector and the photon have become entangled, so they're perfectly correlated. So let's simulate what happens when we measure our photon now that it's entangled with the quantum detector. You can see we have an equal chance of getting zero and one. So just entangling the photon qubit with the detector qubit has the same effect as adding a measurement between the Hadamard gates, 
it prevents the photon from being able to interfere with itself. Even if we don't look at our little quantum detector to read the information, it still destroys the interference. This shows that it's not really us observing the path of the photon in the double slit experiment that destroys the interference. It's us introducing anything that becomes entangled with the photon. The photon's path information being copied to anything at all in its environment will prevent it from interfering with itself. This is the mechanism behind decoherence. If a qubit in a superposition gets entangled with just one other system that's not under our control, then we lose the ability to manipulate its wave-like properties that's needed for quantum information processing. Note that it's not just any interaction between the qubits that stops the interference. It's only interactions that cause them to become entangled, which represents the photon's pathway information being copied to the qubit. For example, let's replace the control NOT gate with a control Z gate, which is not an entangling gate. Then when we simulate this version of the circuit, we see that we only get zero as an outcome, meaning the interference is working again. So now that our extra qubit does not get entangled with the photon qubit, it has no information about which path the photon took. So the photon can interfere with itself once more. The double slit experiment has been experimentally realized with single photons, electrons, and even molecules. Scientists are trying to see if they can get larger and larger objects to display interference with themselves. Now you know how the strange phenomenon of single particle interference can be mapped onto an interferometer and a very simple quantum circuit of just two Hadamard gates. The interference is destroyed when we add a measurement between the Hadamards. And using Qiskit, you can show that even a single qubit detector will destroy the ability of the photon qubit from interfering with itself. In the next video, I'll explain a modified version of the double slit experiment, which makes it seem like choices we make about measurements now can affect what happened in the past. It's called the delayed choice quantum eraser. You can find all the code from this video in the Jupyter notebook linked in the description, along with a blog post with some more information. See you next time.